Do you own or are you thinking about buying a 3.5 liter EcoBoost? If so, stick around. Let me show you one of the most common issues I see on this engine. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mason. I'm a technician here at the Steelership. I'm going to skip my usual sales pitch today. Just go hit the sub button just because I said so. Just go hit it. If it's me, I feel like I feel like Ricky Bobby. Like I don't no, I, I, no, I, 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 I don't I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, they say I'm more to, uh, up in Street Fighter. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So what is this common issue on the 3.5 liter EcoBoost? This common issue is broken exhaust manifold studs. It's always the same two bolts that break. It's the back two on the very back of those manifolds. This video is brought to you by Brunt, the brand that is transforming workwear. Brunt offers high performing workwear at honest prices. These boots are very, very lightweight so that you can move around agile and not get those tired legs from wearing those heavy work boots around all day. And they are also very, very durable. Once you get them broke in, they are probably the most comfortable boot that I've ever personally owned. Over at Brunt, you'll find the most honest people. If you're not satisfied with your purchase, you can return it within 30 days for a full refund. Brunt sells directly to you, so there's no middleman, so you do not experience those extra fees. Shipping and returns are also free as well. Brunt has been kind enough to provide me with a discount code where you get $10 off any purchase of $60 or more. You'll find this code listed down below, so if you're interested in that, go check it out down in the description description below. Honestly, all sales pitch aside, these boots really look awesome. Show you a pair of them I've been wearing here. Foot model incoming. Go buy a pair of Brunt boots. So what year models does this apply to? This applies to the Gen 1 EcoBoost found in the 2011 to 2016 trucks. In 2017, they swapped to the Gen 2 EcoBoost, which is the one we see all the phaser rattle issues on. So the they when they changed to the 17 to the Gen 2, they redesigned the exhaust manifold so it does not break this back bolt on them. So what are the symptoms of this issue? Uh, the symptoms you're going to notice is a very high pitch squealing noise at high rpms you may also notice a uh, loss in power if it's bad enough or maybe a tick at idle especially when the engine's cold The one thing I will say that's unique to this 3.5 about the exhaust leak is that that high pitch squealing noise is actually caused by the amount of pressure the engine is putting out. We need this amount of pressure coming out of that manifold to turn these uh, massive, massive turbos you have on the side. You know, they're, they're really about this big around. Actually, they're, they're real small. They're like this. But that is why that high pitch squealing noise is so loud on this engine. So these symptoms, uh, they describe your issue to a T. How do you go about ensuring that this is the exact problem that's wrong with your vehicle? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is look at the back side of the exhaust manifold. This is done very easily with a flashlight and a mirror. You can also sometimes see them from the bottom if you remove the cover that you uh, would have to remove if you change the oil in it. You can look up from the back with a flashlight and see the stud. It's actually kind of hard to see from up top without a mirror because of how it's located behind the turbocharger. I can actually show you that right here on this, uh, on this truck. This one actually has a broken exhaust manifold stud. As you can look, it's kind of hard to see when the cab's down on the truck, but uh, here's that broken exhaust manifold stud. I hope there's enough lighting in here to see that. But this is where you would need to look. You can look from the bottom or you could look from the side. So you just looked at yours and you decided that it is indeed broke. Now you're curious as to why the stud broke in the first place. Uh, you're curious because we humans just so happen to be very curious creatures. This stud breaks because of all the excess weight that the turbo puts on the backside of the manifold. After a lot of heat cycles, you drive the truck, put 150,000 miles on it, that stud's gonna heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down, and eventually the metal uh, is gonna become weak. And when it becomes weak, the stud will just snap and break off, hence is why the pressure pushes the manifold out and causes a leak. All in all, this is a pretty bad design by Ford. I'm not really sure who designed it, but uh, they was not thinking and accounting for the excess weight that that turbo puts on the manifold. Luckily for us, the, uh, the bright engineers at Ford decided that this deserved a redesign. So they redesigned this manifold to have an extra bolt, extra stud in the back. So that is a huge, huge thing. When you are replacing these manifolds, make sure that you are getting the new updated style manifold. Once I install these on the truck, I generally don't see them come back actually i've never seen one come back after 
installing the revised manifold. So one small tip I do want to throw in here is if you're replacing these exhaust manifolds, when you install the one on the driver's side, there's a heat shield that actually covers up the crank sensor connector that goes into the back of the engine there. When you try to put the new manifold up, it's going to look like it won't fit. But what you actually have to do is you have to get a pry bar and bend the little bracket over where it will actually bend away enough to get the manifold to slide up on the new studs. So when you tackle this exhaust manifold job, what all should you be replacing? So if you watch my other videos about the coolant leaks on the turbo fittings that is produced out of these EcoBoost, almost every one of them before hitting 150,000 miles has had to have them replaced. So there's no way in Sam hell I'm pulling these turbos off to put manifolds on without at least replacing the turbo coolant pipes and the turbo pipe fittings. So a small quick list that I would say to replace when you're doing this, I would replace the exhaust manifolds, all the studs, all the nuts, new exhaust manifold gaskets, also replace turbo gasket, turbo bolts, turbo coolant pipes, turbo coolant fittings, turbo oil pipes, and turbo oil fitting. Turbo oil filter really is what they're called. I will make a list of that down below, hopefully with some part numbers, maybe even some links to where you can purchase some of this stuff. So go check that out down in the description below. So one other small point, uh, a lot of time I'm asked whenever I have a truck like this one come in, uh, the passenger side exhaust manifold stud is broken. It needs a new manifold and a uh, new studs and nuts and basically that whole list of parts I just gave. The question I'm asked a lot is, should I go ahead and replace the other side? My answer to that question is real simple. One shoe wears out and gets a hole in it. Are you gonna replace just the one shoe or are you gonna replace both of them? You're gonna replace both of them. Both sides have the same amount of stress, wear and tear on it. So when you pull the cab like I do, if you pull the cab like I do to do this repair, that is a really, really good time to just go ahead and do both sides so you don't have more issues down the road to keep you from being able to drive your vehicle. Before we move on, it is also worth noting that this is a really, really good time to replace the vacuum pump, spark plugs, and possibly the water pump if you've never had one replaced. They're all really, really common issues on this engine so it's basically like preventative maintenance i would be replacing them if i own one of these and i was doing this repair now finally how many smackaronis does this repair actually cost on average i would say this repair costs somewhere between twenty five hundred and four thousand dollars just depending on how much of that earlier stuff i mentioned spark plugs vacuum pump water pump that you do uh, also combined with your area where you live and what the labor rate is those are all going to be very a lot you know somebody in new york's not going to have the same labor rate as what i do down here in the deep south state of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at this point, you are fully educated on everything you need to know about this 3.5 liter EcoBoost exhaust manifold stud breaking problem issue want to be. I, I don't know, I ran out of words, that felt like a lot. You are educated on it, you know everything you need to know, so you can go in and school your local service writer on information on this. Please don't do, actually do that, just just be, be nice and professional, courteous. At this point, if you haven't already, I don't know what's wrong with you, please go hit the like button. It really, really helps push the channel out. Also, if you would, uh, leave me a comment down below with maybe some other topics of videos you would like to see, or if you just think I'm a complete moron, tell me that down below. I would love to hear, maybe even uh, respond to some of those uh, mean comments that y'all put. All right, so that's gonna wrap us up for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.